This is a little tutorial from a tall person showing you how to make error bars on some simple graphs. So in our lab three, we were looking at hatching viability of our brine shrimp. What I'm going to do is add some numbers here. So what I'm going to do is essentially work myself through this. So um, I know that this was probably the concentration. So let's make our table, I should say. So we'll start with um, sample A, B, C, and D. And these could be the groups of people. And of course, this is one, two, three, four, uh, four, and five. Let's just say, let's see what we have here. I'm going to make this bigger so we can see it. Okay, so I'm just going to select them all. And we're going to go to home here. And I'm going to make it bold. And we're going to make this definitely uh, like 22. Okay, we'll make it a little bigger. Let's get, let's be crazy and bold. Thirty six. Okay, and uh, I want everything to be centered, so I'll hit center. Okay, uh, and we don't really have to uh, put A, B, and C here, but these are the different groups. This could be the different lab groups. Okay, and what I will do is um, I'm going to make some borders here. So let's say I, I do that. I'm going to go to uh, format my cells. And I'm going to hit the border, and I want this big border here. I'll hit OK. That gives me a little line. Do the same thing here, but I want the border to be on the side. So format my cells. And I'm going to put this big one here. OK, and if I want to get fancy, I just want to break this down into some cell boxes. Format cells are in hitting the border. And I'm just going to use this kind of small little line to fill in the holes here. Okay. And again, these are this could be sample, uh, this could be the different lab groups that you have. It doesn't really matter. Um, this one through five, remember, if you remember, the uh, first petri dish was zero percent salt solution. Uh, this one was uh, the 0.5 percent salt solution. 1.0 percent, 1.5 percent, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, 2.0 percent. Okay, so that's just what we're having there. I'm going to make that bigger so you can read it a little bit. Maybe I'll go 20 and I'll just hit the middle bar, the center text. Okay, so we had our five peachy dishes and we measure the hatching viability. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna just put some values in. Uh, I'm gonna say at the, um, uh, for the zero percent, this one group got, uh, let's say, I don't know, five percent. And this other group, let's say, got 10 percent. This other group got three percent this group got zero and this one got let's say twelve percent oops you can see just keep that there and we'll put twelve all I did was I just dragged this little box to carry the um, the uh, formatting that's all I'm doing here so I, I didn't format all of this to the, to the next box I'm just clicking the bottom corner okay and then at the two let's add some some values here ten percent 15, someone got 25, someone got uh, 13, 14, someone got 7. At 1%, someone got a 30, someone got a 25, someone got an 8 maybe, they messed up, who knows, okay. Someone got a 35, let's go another one with a 24. It looks like I didn't do that right, so I'm going to drag this corner. And just put my 24 in here. And let's make this uh, 30 again. I'm just putting in data 45, 38, 40, 35. Oops, again, looks like I didn't. 35. That didn't happen. Drag in the corner. There we go. 
35. Make this 36. This got 59. This went a 48, 55, and 46. Okay, so that's my data. Now I want to add something here. We need a mean. We need a standard deviation. And we need a um, standard error of the mean. We'll keep that SE for obvious reasons. Okay, let's make that smaller. And then we got the 16. Well, too small. And you can jazz this up any way you like. So let's get to the heart of this. I want to make myself a graph. Now, if you're doing this for your individual groups, you can do it like this, and you would do it for the other class. But if you're going to do it for the combined class, I would cut and paste the data for uh, eight or nine groups, put it all the way down to the bottom. Okay. So I need a mean. Now, I can do this in my calculator, but I can do have the Excel do it for me. So I'm going to go to formulas. So I'm just going to click on the formula tab here. And I'm going to go to FX insert, right to the left. And I'm going to look up math or statistical and this set comes in and it says average. That's all I'm going to put here. Now, you notice there's a blinking cursor. It's looking to see average of what? So I'm going to take my cursor and click on these values. And then I'm just going to tend to just put my cursor into the top part, hit return. Notice it gave me a 6. Now, I'm not liking the size of this. It's too small, so I'm going to, for I'm going to um, format that. So I'm going to go back to home. Make this a bigger number, let's say 28, um, and bold in it if you want. I can change its color because I can, and I want it to be in the center. So I click this center text. Okay, what's cool about Excel is I've already run the a mean for all of these, but by dragging this little box here, I'm going to drag this little box downward, and look at that. It's made the means of all of the ones across. So it's taking the formula and just basically reformulated the next line. Took that same formula and made it use the next line. So these are all the averages here. Okay. Now SD, that's standard deviation. We're going to do something very similar. We're going to go to formulas. We're going to go to FX insert. We're going to go to statistical, statistics. And I'm looking for a uh, Basically, I hit statistical, I get this line, and I'm scrolling up or down, however we want to talk about it, to move this down. I'm looking for a standard deviation formula, and oops, it's not what I want. I made an error, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to go hit FX again, statistical, and I'm looking to scroll for standard diva. S-D-D-E-V-A. S-T-E-V-A, so it's standard deviation. Now again, same problem. It's got a blinking cursor in here. It wants to know of what? Well, of this data. So I'm going to click the data. Don't hit the mean, just your values. Again, I put my cursor on the outside, hit enter, and now I have the standard deviation. I want to make this bigger, so I'm going to go to Format Home. I'm sorry. And I'm going to embolden it. I'm going to make this bigger, make it 24, and maybe I'll give it a different color. And then I want to center it again. Okay. Well, again, what's really cool about all of this is if I want the same thing to happen down here, I just drag this corner down. Boom. Okay. Now, standard error of the mean, there's no formula for that. Okay. But if you know your formula that standard error of the mean is essentially what? It's, um, it's the standard deviation over the square root of n. Again, n is how many, what, samples you have. We have five. So what I'm going to do here is I could just go find the square root function. If you want, we can go to, what, formulas, insert, uh, is probably math. And I'm looking for square root or something. Here we go. And it's squirt, S-Q-R-T. And you say, well, how do I know that one? I just, if I'm not sure, I go to my help window and see which, which is the, the, um, the shortcut for the square root. So um, I'm hitting square root, and it says equal. Now, I'm going to get rid of this for now because I want to set this up. I want to take my SD. So this is important. 
it's the standard deviation divided by the square root of how many what samples you have. So I need this to be an equal sign, equal. And where my standard deviation I'm looking for at this row is this box. This box is k. For me, it's k6. So that's the box I have. So I'm going to say equal k6. And why did I just do that? Well, because I'm on, I want to use this value. So it equals k6. The equal sign tells me we're doing a formula. Now I want to take that value and divide by. So I hit that divide symbol, which I guess is a backslash or forward slash. I guess it's, it's the one that kind of leans back, I guess. So backslash, I guess. Anyway, k6 divide by the square root. So if I, I forget, I go insert my math and trig. And I go to my squirt function. I could type this in. That's SQRT. Now it's the square root of something. Now again, there's a cursor blinking because it wants to know square root of what. Well, the formula for standard error that means the square root of the number of what? Choices that you have here. And of course we have five. And I'm going to, again, that's square root of n. I hit enter. And again, let's format that home, embolden it, make it bigger, give it a new color because I can. And I don't know, let's put it over. I don't see most of these colors anyway. And I'm going to drag that corner down. And boom, now I have the standard error of the mean for all of these. Okay, now. Let's make our graph. So I'm going to make my graph based on my mean. OK, we're going to graph the mean. So I'm going to go to charts. And we're going to do line. I hit the line. So I hit 2D line here. I hit this line here. And this boring graph comes up. And of course, it's not realistic because I guess I um, kind of fixed it with my own data, but let's see what we have here. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the format. I can't stand this white over white, so I'm just going to click to the right here and choose one of these advanced or these different formats. So I pick that one. Now, you could make it any color you like. That's just the styles. I'm going to take this series one, and I'm going to just – I clicked on it. I just want to get it out of there. I could – you know, um, write in it what I want to, but I'm just going to hit delete so I make the full part of the graph. Okay, a couple things I can do. I can, I'm going to click on the graph when I right click. Oops, click on the graph. Oop, oop. I'm going to try to click on the graph, try it I can. So they all light up. Okay, there we go. So I clicked on the line so that I get. Notice the um, every data point is lit up. So now I'm going to right click. Oh, it messed me up again. There's, pro there's probably a way to do it, and I'm not unaware. Maybe there's a function key, but I need to select this line. And you'll get as frustrated as me. I don't want to format the grid. I want to select. There we go. Now I right clicked, which is hard on these computers sometimes. So I made sure that the five, and I'm going to add data labels. Okay, now what did that do? That added the uh, actual means there, so that every point has the mean. I click on the line again, right click. Actually, I'm going to click on the labels, make them bigger, because I can. So I'm clicking on the labels. And again, these are just nice little cute little things you can do. Home. And I'm going to, again, same thing. Let's make these bigger. That's probably too big, obnoxiously big. How about 18? That looks good to me. Same thing. I'm now going to click on the line again. Right click. So, again, same thing. I click the line so that all the what? Data points are light up. And now I right click to get this. Format the data series. I think that's what I want. I click that, and it is. And here's what I'm going to do now. This is the most important thing. I'm going to click on error bars. 
I'm going to click on displaying both positive and negatives, and I'm going to put the cap on it. So our error bars have a cap. Now I'm not going to use the fixed value or a percentage or a standard deviation. I'm going to use the custom because we actually we actually calculate the standard error. And I'm going to specify the value. So when I do that, this kind of little box comes up. They want the positive value of the custom error bar. So I'm going to take what? So uh, this, I'm just going to back it up. It's blinking. And now I'm going to select all of my standard errors here. So I'm going to click and drag down like I did when I was trying to the format. And notice all that went in there. Then I do the same thing for the negative. Very important that we have a negative because we want our error bars to go up and down. It's plus or minus one standard error, which is really a standard deviation. So same thing here, drag, boom, boom, boom. Now I've dragged and now it has the information here in the positive and the negative, I hit okay. Make sure I have my cap, error bar is okay. And there it is in all of its glory. I have myself a graph with error bars to see if in fact there is some significance between these movements. Okay, and, and yes, you could put, you could jazz this up with backgrounds. Okay, you could uh, change the, the color schemes. These are just some standards I'm using. You could put in the data, one, two, and three. Could You know, you could do a lot of different things here, but this is as far as I'd like you to go, and this is as good as enough for me. Now, of course, you need a title for you, these graphs, you can put them on your uh, poster or um, add it later, or you can actually Im embed that now. Um, so I've, in any case, that's not what I'm about. The bottom line is you got the graph done, and you want to do this for your own data tables, for your own class, do another class, and then combine them. So you're doing this three times. Hope that helped.